into action. So good afternoon, Maud. How are you today? Hi, Adrian. I'm doing well. Thank you. Purpose in schools. Uh, you're not the first person that's talked about that. What, why do you think that per can, can you teach kids purpose at an early age? How does that manifest itself? Well, for I, I don't know, because I think children already live their purpose. How do children interact with others in the playground? Uh, what role do they play? What's with them and what's with the others? So that is a bit what I think we're kind of forgetting them to teach um, or at least make them understand how that works. Um, and also with the current device of phones and uh, iPads, they kind of lose the attachment also what what they are feeling inside and how they are playing that. We, 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 we obviously, you and I you work together on Discover Your Purpose and it's mm -hmm. a process of discovery, isn't it? Uh, and obviously that's done in adults. And, and and one of the steps in that journey is being able to articulate your, your purpose. Mm -hmm. I'm curious how that work, again works with kids. I've got a 12 year old, a 13 year old and a 15 year old and I'm, I'm trying to think a, would they be able to describe their purpose? And B, what would they do with that? Um, I, th I think for them, it's something natural. Um, so if you ask me, would they be able to describe it? Um, I think they would be able to at least identify a kind of, you know, what they always do that they can't stop doing. But it's a, it's a really very strong relationship between being purposeful and being mindful. Mm. And I think that's that's another conversation, isn't it? But having even children that are mindful that there is a purpose and being aware and open to it is, mm. is a great journey. But now tell me about your purpose and that journey that, that you went through to the point where you realised that you could put some words to it. Yeah, well, that's interesting because I discovered my purpose um, with my uh, with my employer. It was part of the well-being program um, in Unilever, and um, after we had a kind of awareness on emotional well-being uh, and your mental well-being, your physical well-being, we also talked about purpose. Um, and knowing that purpose is something about you know the big things in life, and um, that gives you also energy. Um, so Unilever had described this in the whole workshop and I, I was a kind of, you know, can we do this at once in one day? I was kind of, uh, you know, advocating it because I already did some self-development uh, journeys in that, in which I noticed also that uh, it it keeps on developing. It's For me, it's never a standing still or an in-stone written thing. So my journey started again um, in looking at myself in, in Unilever um, and I did the workshop with a lot of colleagues uh, who I work together with in HR um, which was really nice uh, moment because we all met and we had really honest um, and also um, conversations that were really about uh, your life not only your work um, so I started with navigating others through but it was a bit corporate for me you know it was a bit like okay this is the corporate talk i help people to go through their work their life their their business um and then a bit in conversation with my colleagues i ended up with um being your gentle morning breathe and when i finished the day i was a bit like oh this can work for me but the day after i thought no that's too gentle you know i'm also a person who is um willing to challenge people. But it was all about, you know, helping, supporting, challenging others, uh, but also really about connecting uh, again or re again with the inner self. Uh, that is something that I really can't help doing. Um, so uh, there was a moment in time that I turned my purpose into a connecting heart to head which worked a long time for me, um, but it's, um, 
two years ago, I, I left Unilever and I was thinking, okay, is this really at the, the real thing for me? Um, and I went to do another self uh, investment um, and to, to discover more about myself and who I want to be, what I want to be uh, and who I am mostly. Um, and that's quite, you know, when everything falls away, there's no employer anymore behind yourself. Um, it, it gave me the opportunity to look even further down the line. Um, in which I came now to the sentence of ringing doorbells, inviting others to play. <laughs> and I think that's more me because I also am a person who likes to have a laugh during the journey. Um, and I'm kind of playful. And I, I was really looking at one of the first questions in the Purpose Workshop that is about what did you really like to do as a child? You know, what, what were really your favorite things? And in that reflection, I was constantly thinking about this little mouth um, mm -hmm. who went outside, just went to every kid in the street to ask them to play outside and, and have a lovely afternoon, you know, in the fields, uh, building huts and uh, doing all types of things that, yeah, that children do to play outside. And if I look at that on what I do in my work, I'm always inviting people or teams to look outside of the boundaries, to look, you know, inside themselves, but also to see, okay, what's there? How can I see it differently? How can I manage things differently? Um, so that is about how I discovered my purpose. It's, it's great. I want to pick a few words out. Play. It's mm -hmm. really interesting watching you talking about the word play because you light up. It's obviously something big to you. But it's not a word that comes naturally when you think about the corporate world. And I'm not saying that's right. Maybe it should be. But how do you how does play work in your day to day work? Yeah, so play works for me, uh, you know, also a bit to to push people out of what they are usually doing. Um, and so one part of play is to use humor in, in the conversations you have. Um, because I really believe that eh, don't take yourself too serious. And, and sometimes in the corporate world, people take themselves too serious that they kind of lose the, you know, the, what I wanted to say is that work, when I explain to my children work, I always say that's playing for adults. That's interesting. Yeah. Now, is that because you want to explain it to your children? How would you explain that to another adult? How would you explain that to me? What do you mean by playing for adults? Why is work that? Because I think in in principle, work is something, uh, yes, it gives you a living, it gives, uh, it, it provides uh, some securities for you, but I really believe from the principle that work should be something that you like to be doing. Mm -hmm. Because if you do what you like to do, it costs you less energy yep. and it gives you much more fulfillment. I love that idea of being playful, but more importantly, doing something that you enjoy. It reminds me of that book by Tim Roth. I think Gallup was the, mm -hmm. uh, the, yeah. the company that helped define all the data behind it, but StrengthsFinder. And at the heart of that was you can be you can be a rounded individual and you can be pretty good at most things, but each of us has a talent. And if you can find and connect to that, you could be world class at something. Yeah. And I think that's that similar sense of finding something that you enjoy. And if you can relate it to being playful and being happy, it's like the work on happiness at work. The happiest people yeah. at work are the ones that don't relate to it being work. Yes, indeed. So, uh, and, and that's also when, and that's what I like about, you know, the total system in our body. It's about, because then you physically will feel good. You mentally feel good. And emotionally, you're also thriving because, you know, it's just, you're, you're in this flow where you, you know, where you just enjoy being what you are doing. And then it's not going to work, is it? It's going to play. Yeah. Now, talk to me about the ringing doorbells, because that sounds mischievous to me. It's about 
you know, not only giving guidance to people, but it's also about, you know, just to to challenge them as well. Um, and the ringing doorbells really stand for me like um, sometimes it's about awakening, actually. Yeah, so there are a lot of I have met several people um, in work who are kind of getting into this moment I'm at the end of my career or I, I still need to work 20 years, but what am I going to do? There's no way up. So how am I going to, you know, move myself between this and this ringing doorbell stands for me really on the part like, you know, there's a whole world out there. Yeah. You just need to start seeing it. And it's not only inside the company you're working, but there's a big play field outside that you can start to discover. And I, I think in, in the light of the future of work um, and the transition a lot of companies are in, um, and it, it's good that you reflect with yourself on those things as an employee, because you also have a responsibility for yourself to just mm -hmm. you know make the working part of your life also a good part as you spend so many hours there. The, 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 I've got a very loud doorbell at home and um and in fact the power went off in my house uh yeah. not yesterday morning the morning before and I, and I decided to fix it at five o'clock in the morning uh, mm. and of course that set off all of the alarms in the house and including the doorbell which was very loud and, and it makes me think that you know ringing that doorbell it, it it's loud isn't it it's almost like a wake-up call yeah. you, you know you're almost shaking people and saying you know are you are you being who you can be, who you want to be. Do you ever find resistance to that, Mal, that, that people are not prepared to listen to that call or they can't? Uh, yes, they are. Um, or they can't. Um, from my perspective, but that's also, again, my observation, it's all about um, the limiting beliefs, you know, or unconscious behavior. Because if you look in the Netherlands, uh, there has been a research lately and uh, by one of the broadcasts of, um, they have an economic <laughs> podcast, and they revealed that 80% of the population in the Netherlands, uh, in the working community, would like to switch jobs wow. if they had the same uh, packages, um, remuneration, with, as they have with their current employer. 80%. So if you then think about how many people would be available, you know, for a total job move, in this country, it's enormous. That's incredible, isn't it? That, that, that suggests to me that only 20% of people are living their purpose, are actually playing at work, Play. and the other 80% aren't. And of course, you know, there's there's some Maslow's hierarchy of needs there, isn't there? I mean, we still need to be able to feed ourselves and clothe ourselves and be comfortable. Yes. So we still need the income, but but actually, that's I really like that statistic because it suggests to me that people are self-aware, that yeah. at least they recognise that something is not right. You said earlier that um, you did a bit of work on who you wanted to be and then you corrected mm -hmm. it and said on who you are. Yeah. And, and I think that there is a there's never been a time in certainly the last 20 years. I've done some research on on you know, Google searches where people have been more interested in meaning and purpose. Mm. And, and I think there is a great awakening to. My why? Why am I doing this? Yeah. I've got enough money, so to the point again, I still want my income, but why am I doing this? I want to go back to something you said earlier about the evolution of your purpose statement. I think mm -hmm. you started off being uh, being your gentle morning breath and then connecting uh, hearts to head and, and ringing doorbells. I, I can relate to that myself. I think when I did my purpose workshop, my first purpose statement was something like um, sailing, setting a course, uh, stepping ashore, uh, building the fire, starting the party. And, and I knew what I wanted to say, but actually what it came back to was bringing people together with joy and order. And and it was just something that resonated. So, so I, I don't think that there's ever one statement for your purpose. But purpose evolves and it's the way that you apply purpose that makes a difference. Yes. So how are, how are you applying your purpose now in a way that makes you feel like you're living it? So on a daily basis, it's really about um, 
in in the things I do, I reflect at the end of the day, what did I do today in my purpose? Um, and for example, uh, that means with my kids, in conversation with my kids, um, I feel the difference between, you know, telling them, no, you can't do that or doing it in a playful way and challenge them a bit. Um, and the same is in my relation with my husband. And if I look at work, it's constantly about the awareness of, hey, is it in my uh, comfort zone or is it outside of my comfort zone? Um, and, and reflecting and being aware on that on a daily practice, uh, it, it requires discipline, but it's also, you know, it's given me also a kind of guidance on is this what I, how I want to live mostly. Yeah, I, I'm very interested in the idea that that you can apply your purpose in lots of different ways. There is no one single way. And in actual facts, well, let me ask you the question. Yes. Do you think that you can apply purpose regardless of what job you do? If your purpose is to, you know, to ring doorbells and invite people to play, can you do that in any setting? And if not, why not? I, I think you can apply your purpose everywhere because it, it it is something that comes out of you and you bring your whole self to the to the picture, to the table, to the party. Um, so in that sense, yes, I do. Um, however, you know, I think that there's this part of, you know, how do you look at jobs? You know, do you put them in a marketing box or do you put them in a, in a human resource box? Mm -hmm. That's also something we decided with, with each other to put in boxes off. You know, you could also think, yeah, employer branding is much more marketing thinking than it is HR. So it's about yeah who you bring to the party and from that perspective you bring your purpose in my sense so you're a busy mum uh you're having lots of uh, conversations around purpose in, in, in children w w tell me about tell me about your your purposeful business what is it that you're you're doing with your coaching practice so with the coaching practice i kind of i have a few items in my uh professionalism that i really like one is the coaching part the other part is the the headhunter inside of me and so i've lots of flight hours in recruitment and searching for people and the other part is um, hr advisor and of course purpose facilitator so those are the four heads i kind of pick up um, and if I look at those, um, it's that um, I just can't stop doing, you know, bringing things together, um, asking people what they are searching for. So either it's a candidate and a company or it's the candidate and the client itself in my coaching practice uh, or in the purpose facilitation. I'm really so curious about how people got where they are but also the part of what do they struggle with because uh, there's something in uh, without friction there's no shining and if you kind of uh, get that rough diamond more uh, in the shining part uh, that's where my energy you know lights up that i think wow even it's this minor you know for that for that person it can be the start of a whole new journey for someone I think you said there's no shining without friction. There's yeah. no there's no polishing and, and that we're a rough diamond. I think that's lovely. I've got one one kind of final question because I'm conscious of your time here mm. and it's around that headhunting. Yeah. So, yeah, I, mean, I guess we've all been in the world of work for long enough and we've worked in HR and you've got a job description and, and probably you've got some competence requirements and experience. Are we getting to the point where there's a purpose requirement for somebody or how does purpose fit into actually recruiting somebody? I'm really curious as to whether you're now looking for somebody that has the right skills, the right experience, but do they, is this going to fit their purpose? Well, I, I think that's a very interesting question because uh, last week I had somebody who said, yeah, I have a few candidates that tick all the boxes. But from where I was standing, I thought, oh, gosh, you are missing out on such a great, you know, candidate now. Um, so I, I truly believe that when you have uh, people in front of you as candidates that know themselves that have this that clear you know guidance of where uh, their purpose is i believe 
when you have discovered that, you have so much more stability in who you are also to face the constant changing environment, uh, the challenges that we have in our work environment, uh, because it's so there are so many paradoxes that you need to deal with, with as a manager or as a company, um, which requires a lot of managers, but also of employees. So I truly believe that that can really help you if you have that guidance of your purpose. Yeah. Well, Matt, thank you so much for talking to me today. Uh, I, I don't think that we've fully bottomed out the development of children and their purpose. No, Maybe but we will in the future. Interview. But I wish you well and uh, thank you very much. Uh, and I must put a link up to your coaching practice uh, website at the end as well. So thank you very much. Thank you, Adrian. And I hope you have a lovely day. Yay! <laughs> that wasn't too painful, was it? Oh, gosh. <laughs> That's